How do you use ChatGPT for your family history? It is such a powerful platform and some people are kind of afraid of it. There's a lot of talk going on about ChatGPT, but it can really help you in your family history. And I have Steve Little here, who is the AI program director for the National Genealogical Society. He, this is a passion of his and he knows so much and he's gonna share his vast knowledge with us. We're gonna to talk today about warnings about ChatGPT and things that could make it go wrong for you. And then we're also gonna talk about some of the things that you can ask that can really help you in your family history. So this is gonna be great. Steve, thank you so much. Well, it's a pleasure, thank you for asking me here. So tell me, let's let's start with the bad first. Okay. Let's get rid of the good, bad, you know, we talk good, bad, and ugly. I think you yes. talked about that in your presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's get rid of the bad first, because I want to end on the good. Okay. good. So what are some of the things that we need to be careful of when we're using yeah. ChatGPT? Um, the things we need to be careful of today are not the things we're going to have to worry about tomorrow. Okay. But there's things we can't do today that we call limits. The number one thing that people try to use it for is as if it was a Google search engine. So the mistake people make is trying to learn something and, and or at least learn something they didn't know about an ancestor or a relative. And that's not how we're using this tool today. Um, so today, uh, a bad question would be, uh, unless you know what you're doing, generally a bad question would be to ask it something you don't already know which is what people do when they go to Google. They're right. trying to find out something they don't know. Yeah. And so for very beginners, I suggest to beginners in their first 20 hours, ask yourself each time before you click the send button, am I asking this tool to tell me something I don't already know? And if the answer to that question is yes, stop, don't do that. Okay. Um, and so, uh, there's better uses for the, this tool, but right now it's not for research. Um, it's much better if you're giving it information to help you work with. That's such a good warning because, and if you're hearing a background noise, something's going on here in the expo hall. But that's really a good point because I think a lot of people started chat B GPT saying, who's my whatever, what can you tell me? And I think something that people need to be warned about is chat GPT can lie. Yes. Right? Yes. So tell me about that. Yes. Um, in, in the field, they call it hallucinations because this tool, it, it does not work with reality as you and I know it. Um, it is working with language and words, and it doesn't know what's real and what's not real. So it works by just picking the next right word, whether that corresponds with reality or not. Um, if you know what you're doing, you can um, have it the hallucination rate can be under 3% and even much lower than that. But if you're just beginning, it will make up stories and it doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not, what's true and what's false. Um, it's just trying to put together a good sentence and paragraph, whether or not it has anything to do with reality or not. There's lots of things we can do to mitigate that and or, or just use it for other better purposes. Uh, but if you're not careful about what you're asking it to do, it will just spin you a nice yarn. So what are the things that ChatGPT can do? What are great applications of it? This, this is, this is and, and this will grow, but right now our expectations are much more modest. And so um, it works best if you're giving it information to process. If you're bringing information to it, and asking it to help you do something. And genealogists are pack rats. You've been collecting information for 20, 30, 40 years. And it can help you process this information you've been collecting for a long, long time. So there's four basic things that this tool is good for. It's good for summarization. That's taking a lot of information and making it smaller. And this is, this is beautiful. This is how you turn coal into diamonds. This is tremendously valuable. This is how you take a 20-page probate file and turn it into a two-paragraph summary. And that's, that's a big deal. 
in um, extraction. So the four are summarization, extraction, generation, and translation. Okay. So the second one is extraction. Extraction is finding golden needles in haystacks. Say you have just volumes of information and you need to pluck out some information. Say you have that 20 page probate file again and you want to generate an Excel spreadsheet of everybody that's listed in that probate file and why they're listed in the probate file and it will extract that information for you. Generation. Generation is how you take a little bit of information and make it bigger. This is how you could get it to write a report that's true. This okay. is if you have a short list or maybe a not so short list of names, dates, places, relationships, events, and you want to tell a true story. Well, it can take that list of names, dates, relationships, and events and tell you a true story. And it can do it in the style of a New Englander, a Midwesterner, a hillbilly like me, or a pirate. <laughs> it will emulate any style of writing that you would like. So it's very good at generation. Now you have to, you have to, you are the human in the loop. You have to go back and double check its work. You are always responsible for what it does. So you have to go back and really double check that it hasn't injected any of false information and that's your job. It's not going to do everything for you, but progress over perfection. It will carry you 80 or 90 or 95 percent of the way there, but you still have to do the, the checking at the end. It's your name on the report and so you're responsible for checking. So that's generation. The last one is translation. And translation means what you think it means, but it also means a lot more. Okay. When I say translation, it is very, very good at translating from one human language to another. Yes. If it's in the top 50 human languages, if you're talking about Aleutian or um, Icelandic or Navajo, much smaller populations, it's not as good. Uh, but if you're in the top couple dozen spoken languages, it will translate from one language to another immaculately well, um, really, really well. So it's very strong at translation in that sense of the word. But it will also translate in several other important senses of the word. Say you have a legal document from the 1700s and you can't make heads or tails of it. It will translate that 1700s legalese into plain modern English. Now it's not a lawyer and so you shouldn't take legal advice but it'll give you a pretty good summary of the plain meaning of an old legal document. For Also for example if you have something in Shakespearean English or even older uh, old English. It will translate older English into plain English. It'll translate modern legalese into plain English. Um, it will translate one style of writing into another. For example, if you have an academic report, if you're trying to understand some scholarly article about DNA that's just a little bit over your threshold of comprehension, you could say, simplify this article for me as if for a fifth grader I, or a tenth grader. And you will find that it, it will simplify complex information very well to a, a comprehension level that is good for you. Um, so those are the four primary ways that it's good with language. Summarization, extraction, generation, and translation. Now that's just with words. It's also very good with pictures. Um, it will generate pictures, and you've probably seen about yeah. since last uh, Halloween. Yeah. Uh, since Halloween, folks have just been having a blast with creating images. Yeah. And some folks are getting really good at images. For example, Dana Leeds has created a method where she took a photograph of her grandmother Hazel and created a uh, kind of a cartoonish character. But now she can consistently draw that image of her grandmother through different episodes of her life to tell a story in pictures. And it used to be you would have to hire an artist to do that. And, and now you, you can do that yourself. And so you can generate your own useful images for family history. It's also good at taking images and analyzing images. For example, I have the draft card of my father, grandfather from World War II. And his handwriting, it was in print and, and it was um, not terribly neat. 
but I was able to show ChatGPT a copy of this draft card, and I first asked it, what information would you expect to find on a World War II draft card? And in Boom, it told me the 20 most likely pieces of information to find on a draft card. And then I said, well, look at this draft card and tell me what you see in this draft card and put it in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. And boom, it goes through and it extracts all the information from this draft card from my grandfather, um, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. You know, I've got to add in that I used ChatGPT not long ago. I had a CT scan. And my doctor wasn't reviewing it. They weren't, you know, I don't know if you guys have trouble with that kind of stuff, but I do. And I was anxious to see the results. So I get the results and I threw it into ChatGPT and I said, translate this into layman terms. And it did. And it was wonderful. So I can say for me, that worked out great. So, okay, five examples of good phrases that you can use in chat GPT because a lot of times we can talk about this kind of academically but applying it can be kind of difficult so let's give everybody five good ones that will change their world okay. when we're doing this for genealogy when we talk to the chatbot that's called our prompt we are we are giving it a prompt and so here's the the five keywords that you want to remember. This is how you can compose your own genealogical prompt. You want to give it a role, a goal, a text, a task, and a flask. And what I mean by that is a role, you want to tell it to assume the expert that you want to talk to. Uh, the goal, the goal is a brief description of what you want it to do. The text, when you give it a piece of text, this is how you stop it from making up stories, from hallucinating, from lying. You're giving it something to chew on, and so that's the text. The task, this is where you tell it step by step what you want it to do. And then the flask is just a, a rhymy way of saying, what shape of the response do you want? Okay. So here's some examples of using a role, a goal, a text, a task, in a flask. For example, for summarization, say you have a will and you want to summarize the will. Here is how you would do it. This would be your prompt. You are an expert genealogist. Your goal is to summarize this 20-page probate file. Find below the complete text of the probate file. Go through and give me an executive summary with important details quoted in exact quotes and do this in about a thousand words. Okay. And then you include below that the complete text of the probate file and it would go through and summarize the probate file in about a thousand words. If you wanted to do extraction, you could say you are an expert genealogist. Your goal is to summarize this will. Find below the complete text of this will go through this will and extract the names of any people mentioned, why they are mentioned, if they are being bequested or given something, and what their relationship to the person making the will is. And finally, show me the proof of what you think, why you think this. Extract the exact quote from the will that leads you to believe that Tom is leaving to marry a piece of property. And it will go through and process that will and create a table of the person who's giving something away, the person who's receiving something, what they're receiving, and their relationship. And then it will show you the sentence from the will that it thinks is evidence. And that makes your work of checking behind it much, much easier. So Love the, it. The third example would be generation. Say you already had a short list of, of names, dates, relationships, places, events. Uh, you could say you are an expert storyteller and genealogist. Your goal is to tell true stories. Find below a list of facts. Using only the facts listed below, create a narrative report of using the information below and do this in about a thousand words and write it in the style of Floyd the Barber from Andy Griffith. And it would go through and it would tell that story and it would sound like Floyd the Barber from Andy Griffith. I love that. That's a good one. <laughs> so All right. 
One of the things that I heard you say that I think is really important is use only the information provided here. Yes. And then I think you said something about truth or something like, what did you say in that? Um, we rely only on the facts. On the facts, that's yes. Below. And sometimes I add a phrase such as, it, it can bit, uh, get a bit verbose. And so if you really want to get it to stick to the facts, I, a phrase I sometimes use, and this works, I will say dry recitation avoid editorializing and these okay. little you need these are called chat bots chat gpt is a chat bot and so you need to have a conversation you're not just going to give it one instruction and be done you're going to have a conversation you're not going to get this right the first hour it takes about it's more like learning to swim or ride a bike or play twin tennis so it takes about 20 hours of practice to get the hang of this so somebody that just says oh, i'm going to give this a try and you're not going to succeed at first right that no. shouldn't make you fail so no. don't don't give it some give it some tries yeah. figure things out and you'll be successful but you're gonna have to give it a little bit of time yes yeah. it, it play with it what it can't do today is a limit but today's limits are tomorrow's breakthroughs these machines will never be dumber than they are today every day they're getting smarter and smarter and better and better and cheaper and cheaper and faster and faster so the things that can't do today it might be able to do tomorrow all right, and give me another good example that people can actually use. Here's a good one. My wife and I went to the tomb of Edgar Allan Poe, and I took a photograph of the tomb of Edgar Allan Poe, and I showed it that image, and I said, transcribe what's in that image, and then describe everything around the image. And it went through and created a perfect transcription. It extracted the text from the tombstone, and then created a little table of that, and then told me a little story about that. And I've done that with many other relatives. I can walk through a cemetery and take a picture of a headstone, and you can do this on your phone. You can access these tools on your phone, and, and it will create an Excel spreadsheet from a photograph of a tombstone. That's fantastic. All right, last example. We promised you five. Give me one on the translation aspect. Tell me if you had a document that was in French, yes. and you don't read French, and you want to translate that, how would you put that into ChatGPT? Well, it, you would first assume that you had the French text, and it probably can't be French handwriting at this point. You would just say you are an expert speaker of French and English. Uh, your goal is to translate this document from French to English, find below the original French text, um, translate this document into contemporary American English, um, and do this word for word. You would paste below the original French text, and it would do that. And you could tweak how it does that if you wanted it to say um, a word for word translation or a thought-for-thought thought translation. Okay. There's many different ways to do translation, um, uh, depending on how loose or tight you wanted it. But then you're gonna have to find a French speaker to check your work. Um, you're not gonna trust, I, I mean, if you want a rough idea that it's probably, and, and I've had native French speakers tell me that it's very, very good. I barely speak English. I don't speak any <laughs> other Englishes, any other Englishes. <laughs> um, uh, so it, to, if you were doing this for serious professional work, you'd want to have somebody check. Yeah. But if you just need a general idea of what does this say, it's pretty trustworthy. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for helping us have these hints. Thanks. Please give it a try because you can do it. And um, it's silly to just let this sit on the shelf and not utilize it. And thanks again. I really appreciate it. My have, pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, you bet. Have a great day, folks.